today. It's Madden NFL Football. It's Week 18 of the NFL on EA Sports. It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Atlanta Falcons. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Today, the curtain falls on the regular season, and we've got a good one in store between the Atlanta Falcons and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Alongside Charles Davis and Charles, you take a look at this Buccaneer ball club. Now, they've lost three straight here, and it goes without saying, I guess, they could certainly use a win. And how do they get a win? Because they've lost three straight, I think it's paramount that they get a fast, clean start to this game. Twenty-two men ready to do battle. It's time to dance. And off we go on EA Sports. Fields this way up at the 17. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. And leading him out, their veteran quarterback. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. Looking to throw on second down. Russo, and that one going to be off target and incomplete. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Operating from the gun. Russo, flush to his right. Wide open receiver complete. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. That's a third down conversion to 24 yards there. Nice play. Now that's all about making something happen as a quarterback because instead of forcing something on third down, how about him buying some time outside of the pocket, waiting for someone to come open? And when he did, he put it on him for a big play and a first down. So the ball moves from 138 to the other as they come up on first and 10. Straight ahead running, here's Samuels. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. It's second down. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Looking to throw. Russo. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And this pass broken up. Now the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the Bucs take a 3-0 lead. Had just the one big play on the drive, but that was enough to put him in field goal range. Yeah, one big play of what they hope will be many others throughout the game. Every team has a different target for the number of plays like that, those explosives that we talk about. That allowed him to put points on the board on that drive. Let's see how the rest of the game goes. So here are the Falcons now as they get set for their opening possession. And they are led out there by their mobile quarterback. 
and he comes to the end of the season leading the NFL in passing yards. And that's not necessarily something you set out to do at the beginning of the year, but it's a good illustration of how remarkable and consistent he's been all season. Now a play fake here on first down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Stanley. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Back to throw. Rich. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher. That's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers, working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. They'll look to throw again. And he fires one that's intercepted. And the Bucs are going to get it back here just past the 35. So a first interception thrown for him there. And that really not the best decision either. Not at all. And that's something he did not do in their victory last week. No interceptions in that game. But this defense, they're able to take advantage of an early mistake. Now let's see if they're going to turn it into points. With the Bucks offense making their way back out on the field. Let's take a look at the playoff picture, Charles, coming into the weekend in the NFC. Well, here we sit, week 17. Just one more week in the regular season after this one. So if you're one of these teams trying to make a move and improve your spot or jump in from the outside, Charles, you better make that move now. And these final games are often a good barometer for all those teams fighting for position or wild card spot. They have to be able to get the job done these last two weeks before things get even tougher when the playoffs officially begin. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. On first and 10, Russo, quick hitter here, it's complete. And the tackle gonna be made at the 38. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for. One of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. From the gun on third down, Russo. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 18. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And the Bucs are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. Now a give running right is Samuels. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. 
Looking to throw. Russo. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. They'll look to throw on third and goal. Flushed out right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Disastrous outcome there on third and goal. They lose nine yards on the sack. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal, that's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. And this one is right through. And that will make it six to nothing. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense, the firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Falcons. A big play there. His 16th rushing touchdown on the year. And the Falcons strike quickly here to tie up the ball game. Boy, Charles, this offense is just so explosive. They lead the league in scoring. And another example of just how good they are right there on that play. Yeah, we often overstate about how explosive teams are, but this team is truly a threat to score on every snap, especially on the first few plays of any series. And a big strike like that, that only adds to their reputation as the league's best offense. Point after, right down the middle. And they take the lead here at 7-6. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fields it right around the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again as we grind toward the end of the season here, and they haven't had the season that they had hoped. So let me ask you to play GM. Where might they look to make some changes? I think when you look into the upcoming draft, think hard about them drafting multiple offensive linemen. They've got to get stouter up front. And as a GM it always tells me, Charles, this is a big boy league, and big people always end up winning games for you. On second down, Samuels. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Well, this defense for the Falcons, they played really well in the win over the Raiders a week ago. Yeah, what stood out to me on tape, the way they were flying to the football. So that tells me that they've got all their assignments down and they're playing with extreme confidence. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. From the gun on third down, Russo. Looking right sideline, that's complete. And he is going to have a Bucks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Nice. 
They go play action here on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. The end result, 21 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 34. Operating from the gun, Russo steps away. And this is caught, a spectacular one-handed grab there. Another big hitter there, this one good for 18. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. Well, this offense has already been forced to settle for field goals on their drives earlier, so this is not a welcome sign here. Indeed, it is not, and they certainly hope it's not a sign for the entire game because they know they've got to be able to sustain drives all the way through, pick up those guys rushing the quarterback, and give himself a chance. They'll hand it off now to Samuels. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. A third field goal of the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. Looking middle, and that's complete. And the Buccaneers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. You're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. A quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. A line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. A great effort there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Buccaneers are once again back in front. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals. Before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. The extra point splits the uprights. And that'll make this a six-point game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. On oh, the return is Jones from the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Here comes the Atlanta offense now, ready to take over here. And they, if you just look at this game, Charles, on paper, they've got the edge, no doubt. They're hanging around the top of the NFC. On the other side, you got a squad that's towards the bottom of the NFC. But when we mentioned that to the coaches, they were having no part of it. Yeah, and I like how you said when we mentioned it. In fact, I mentioned it, and I upset them a little bit, didn't I? Because they wanted no part of that one, and I was reminded, like a five-year-old, this is the NFL. Any given Sunday, anything can happen. They're guarding against the upset. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. To throw on third down. Rich over the middle complete. It's Jacobs. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. 
So the completion good for seven there. And that'll bring up fourth down. The Falcons send out their punter as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass <laughs> rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the yeah, football. We'll see if they can disrupt it here. From the lineman to the guy running with it, that was a well-executed first down by the offense. With two shots left to get the first, you can get a little aggressive here on second down if you want and try for some bigger yardage. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. An entertaining start to this one. More to come on EA Sports. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Back to throw. Russo, he rifles one that's intercepted. And the Falcons are going to take possession of the football. Week after week, we're seeing plays like this from him. And I think he's in line. We've discussed it before for NFL Defensive Player of the Year. And a big reason why, I think, is because of his ball skills. And that's something that, for guys of his position, they've talked about it for years. They've done the drills. But they've really increased it in recent seasons because of the offense have gotten so good. He knows how to take the ball away. That is huge for a defender. They'll run on first down. It's Stanley. And a short game down to about the 33. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Looking to throw. Rich firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they're going to get this down inside the 20. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. To throw on second down. Rich throwing quickly here, and he's got Jacobs. And the Falcons are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. Off the play fake. Rich, and that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons are an extra point away from capturing the lead. You got it figured out by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. And this puts him on top by a penny. It's 14-13. The drive summary that time, five plays. And the Falcons score to cap it off. Atlanta's 11 ready to go, and they kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it to 26. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. As the offense comes out here, Charles, uh, maybe perhaps a bit more of a focus on the run game for this drive after tossing an interception on the previous one? I think that's a good way to look at it and a good way to think about it, but maybe they get to it in a little bit different way because after you throw an interception, 
You want to make sure you keep your quarterback's confidence high, so maybe give him a couple easy throws that he can complete and then get to the running game and try and get things settled down. Yeah, and still in the first half here, a long way to go. This, the second meeting between these two division rivals. You might recall they met earlier in the year, and it was the visitors getting the win there, so they'll be looking for the sweep back here at home. Off play action, Russo. And he'll find the open man on the right side, it's Kane. This offense so far on third down, they've converted four times out of six, not bad. This is third and four. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Yeah, last week in the loss, five punts as he gets this one away. Good coverage there, an even 50-yard punt leads to a return of five. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. And here now come the Falcons. Well, the football changing hands here, and as this offense takes a field, Charles, they'd be fine with more of the same on this upcoming drive. Last time out, they found the end zone for six. And they're certainly hoping for more of the same, but the game plan, I doubt it'll just be a carbon copy of the last drive because I think this offense is ready to break out some new wrinkles and try some new things that might be hidden in their playbook. They want to use that confidence to its advantage while also keeping the defense from anticipating what's up next. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll keep it on the ground. Stanley try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Back to throw. Rich. He finds his man complete. It's Jacobs. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man of the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it, from route running to catching the football, that's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. Throwing on first down. Rich, a uh, quick throw, knocked away, and incomplete. So, CD, here we are. You look at how well this offense has played all year, 16-0. Now, in most years, they'd be at home right now enjoying time off for their perfect season, getting ready for the postseason. But this is the decade of the 2020s, so that means 17 games are what's needed to get through a perfect season. Would a win here make them an all-timer for you? It would. It absolutely would. And I realize we're not comparing apples to apples because of the length of regular seasons. But if you think back to the 1972 Dolphins, they were 14-0 and in the regular season. Three wins made them a Super Bowl champion, so they were 17-0 and total. Imagine getting through 17 now and then continuing on and winning the Super Bowl. They're an all-timer team already for me. I am willing to bet that he got a monster grin on his face when he saw what was happening. Man Cubs were so committed to denying a big throw that it pulled attention away from him, and he had an easy lane to hit, and hit it he did. On first down, Rich, he finds his man complete. It's Jacobs. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Back-to-back -back nice gains, that one for 14 yards and another first. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Got his tight end. That's complete. That's Wilson. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. Now a handoff up the middle. It's Stanley. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. So they're coming up here on the ninth play of the drive, and it's third and goal. Looking to throw. Rich. And it's caught. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. And his 
kick is indeed good. And that'll move their lead up to four now. So three points on the board, as easy a field goal as you're going to get, but I can see you shaking your head. I love that peripheral vision of yours, partner, because to me, if it's the fourth quarter and you're up six, I get it. But now, even if you run and don't get in, you're still setting them up to go a long field, 98, 99-yard drive. How do you look at your defense and not give them that opportunity? Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. That's three sacks now. That's not much of a surprise to me, nor should it be to you. This team, they lead the league in sacks. Yeah, they do. This is something that we are starting to witness time and time again. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary now on third. Back to throw. Russo. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. A 47-yard punt, maybe a couple on the return. And it will be Falcon football. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Jacobs. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Back to throw again. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And the Buccaneers are going to take possession of the football. So that changes things. You get the interception, and then to boot, a good return tacked on. And really, it was down to him versus the quarterback on the return, and that's one you would think the defender would win. But a nice job there of seeing the play all the way to the end and making the tackle by the QB. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And following the turnover, they'll look to take the lead here as they start with a first and goal. Looking to throw, Russo. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Buccaneers have yet again retaken the lead. But what a quick turnaround there. They get the football. Next play, boom, touchdown. I've been in this situation before where a turnover occurs. And if you're over on the bench with your defensive mate and you talk about what to do on your next series, and all of a sudden you hear sudden change, you've got to get out on the field and defend right away. Not everyone is mentally prepared to go. Is that what is yelled on the sidelines a lot of times? That, among other things. <laughs> Maybe some words we can't share here. Yeah, we'll, we'll just keep this one, Peach. FCC violation. No doubt. Extra 
point right down the middle. And that gives him a three-point lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taken in at the three. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. Well, still early in this one, Charles, but the last time this offense was out there, they threw their first interception of the ball game, so trying to avoid repeating that mistake here on this drive. And to put a positive spin on it, at least it happened in the first half and not in a close game in the fourth quarter, but you're absolutely right, partner. One of the last things this offensive quarterback wants to witness again in this game. Kind of an obvious question, Charles, but anything you try to avoid after your first pick or you say, it's one interception, we're still in the first half, I'm about to do the same thing. I think you want to avoid playing scared, you know, and put it into the mind of the quarterback that you've lost confidence in him. Make sure you get some throws that he's going to be able to complete, make him feel good about himself, and continue to run your offense. So the completion results there in nine yards, and they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Now here's the option play going left. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. A really nice effort that time. 12 yards on the keeper, picking up the first. Well, I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. On first down, it's Stanley. And he maneuvers up the middle for three, and it's second down. The last run got three, now here's second and seven. Operating from the gun, Rich. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. On first and 10, Rich buying time to his left. Throwing for the out route, he finds Wilson. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 12-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field and I think in the second half that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside from down at the 12 it's first and 10 that is caught at the seven yard line give him a gain of five on the completion and it's second down again he'll drop to throw eluding the pressure right and he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Back to throw. Rich. He finds his man complete. That's Stanley. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. 
And they'll try the option on first and goal. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. And that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. He kept it in his hands and tried to push it across the goal line himself, but the defensive front wouldn't allow him to do so. Bringing up second down and a bit farther. From back at the four, here's second and goal. Looking to throw. Rich escaping the pressure. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. And that one really pushes him back. A loss of nine. And now it's third and goal after the sack. Operating from the gun. Rich steps away to his left. And to the left side here, Wilson. Oh, he's going to be brought down there in the field of play. And the clock will run. No timeouts. They will not have the chance to bring out the field goal unit. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. It's all down to this. Week 18 of the NFL regular season. Lots to be decided, so let's get right to it. We start with a great one in the NFC. The defending Super Bowl champion Los Angeles Rams and New Orleans from the Caesar Superdome. And it's the Rams who have the lead in the second quarter. The Rams trying to hold on and claim victory. From there, we're off to check out another game. And at this point, they trail the visiting Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens locked in a tight one, but this is a game you feel they've got to have. Lastly, let's get you to Charlotte, North Carolina. Check on the Panthers at home at Bank of America Stadium. And in that one, it's the visiting Giants who have the lead. Justin Herbert with two touchdown passes. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out, we give it back to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. And the Falcons ready to go back to work to start the third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. On second down now, it's Stanley. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and 10. Operating from the gun, Rich. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. With that grab, he now sits at 200 for his career, and maybe more importantly, a first down. there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Looking to throw on second down. Rich, he finds his man complete. It's Jacobs. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, 
why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. They'll run on first down. It's Stanley. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. And he stopped immediately there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Back to throw. Rich dancing to his left. Oh, he just needed to throw it away, but instead, out of bounds he goes, and that's a sack. That's going to back him up almost a full 10 yards. It's going to be a loss of nine officially, and it's fourth down. So when the defense complains about having to do pursuit drills in the heat of training camp, plug in this play. Excellent pursuit. Force the quarterback out of the pocket. He ends up trying to run for it. Instead, he goes out of bounds and loses yardage. That goes down as a sack for the defense. That's on target, but it's no good. He had it on line, but it came up just shy of the crossbar. And instead of tying it up, they'll remain down by three. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. Down here in the third quarter, obviously that's one they could have used. Yeah, and one of my favorite special teams coaches in the NFL told me what separates the kickers in the NFL versus the ones who are not is not the misses. It's the second miss in a row. Best kickers in the league, they don't miss two in a row. He's got to get his head back together in case he gets another shot. Off the play fake, Russo. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Looking to throw. Russo, right, rifles one and that's gonna be intercepted. And the Falcons are gonna take over at their own 41. What a season he continues to have defensively. Now a dozen interceptions this year, Charles. And let's face it, we've watched a lot of ball. But when you get 12 in one year, that's better than most careers, isn't it? Absolutely. And you might be asking for a bump in pay, too. Oh, no doubt about it. Running right in there and talking to the team. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. They'll start in excellent field position following the INT. Throwing to start the drive. Rich. And down he goes. A Buccaneer sack. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there. And it's second down. And that's his second sack in this one. And you just can't ask a defensive end or an edge rusher to play any better than what we're seeing right now. And partner, it's still just the third quarter. I'm thinking he's not done yet. Even if he's not getting a sack, he's bringing a lot of pressure to the pocket. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Now a handoff up the middle. It's Stanley. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. And the box with an extra defender of the secondary now on third down. Operating from the gun. Rich. He finds his man complete. That's Stanley. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. 
And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Back now comes Tampa Bay. Here comes another drive from this unit, and Charles, they're coming off a costly mistake on the last possession, an interception in a game that is very close right now. Well, as we know, they all sting no matter what the situation, but in a one-possession game, that'll hurt a little bit more. But this is an excellent opportunity to make up for it on this drive. I just don't expect them to try and take huge gambles to make up that momentum in a hurry. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Here's Samuels again. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, Russo flush to his right. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. And that'll bring up fourth down on the big sack with a loss of five. A CD, a little bit of feast or famine for him. He's had some success throwing the football, but also now he's been sacked four times. Yeah, you just mentioned the four sacks, but you're right. He has managed to hang in there and make plays at times. His offensive line, they've got to figure it out and pick things up and give him more opportunities. And he has to help them by getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker as well. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. Taken from just outside the 30. Good blocking there. Nearly sprung him as it is. It'll go as a 19-yard return. And the Falcons are set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Now this one complete on the slant route. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Good work after the catch. Going to net him 23 and a first. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Throwing on first down. Rich. Wilson's got it complete. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here's second and five now from the 22. Operating from the gun, Rich. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. On first down, Rich. This will be caught just inside the 10. From the seven, it's second and five. Operating from the gun. Rich firing quickly here, and that's complete. So back-to-back -back plays each get nothing, and it brings up third and five now. Well, the stats that matter on this play don't help a team very much, unless, of course, you're playing defense. 
If you're getting points per reception, you got a reception, but yeah. no yardage. Great job by the defense, though. They, they read through that. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons have taken the lead here in this third quarter. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? the timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route ordinarily is probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Extra point forthcoming. And that will make this a four-point game. So this drive spans seven plays, and the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And they worked this well upfield across the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. They'll look to throw here on first down. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. Off play action. Russo. He's got his man on the crossing route. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle is made at the Falcons 19. That one goes for 24 yards. Second and short. That's a rundown. So it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And it's incomplete. But well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. On the handoff, it's Samuels. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Operating from the gun, Russo. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. They'll run for it with Samuels. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. So a moment to catch our collective breath after the fourth down conversion. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Operating from the gun. Russo, touchdown! A great play there. 
with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Buccaneers put together a fourth quarter drive to take the lead. But plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown on the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back.